opening statement, so you're going to just fire away with questions. Questions? Uh, Mike, how has Hudson Mason responded? To, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> force a habit. Three years ago, obviously, there was an opening here and you were available. Why was the time not right then? Why is the time right now? Uh, well, I, I, I went to, uh, you know, first of all, there wasn't really an official opportunity to come back here uh, three years ago. And, uh, you know, I made a decision to go to, go to South Carolina uh, with Coach Muschamp and, Unfortunately, that didn't work out. Uh, this time, uh, after Auburn, uh, had opportunities to go other places, but I wanted to go somewhere where I can continue learning uh, as a coach. And I always wanted to be under uh, coach, coach Smart's under the Coach Saban tree and learn how they practice, how they organize, how they went about things. And I, I tell, you know, even tell recruits, you want to go somewhere you're developed. And I came here last year you know, to try to get developed more as a coach. And it was really a learning curve. And, you know, those guys took me in, and it was very, very positive. Uh, with Coach Mucking uh, going to the NFL, the opportunity presented itself to be to be coordinator and felt comfortable about being here. Athens is a great place. I met my wife here. Uh, my kids were born here. Uh, and, you know, you're at a place working for an administration that believes in what we're doing, our head coach, uh, that uh, has a plan of how to do things and, and to be part of this program that I played at, went to school, graduated from the University of Georgia. I, I couldn't pass that opportunity up. But I didn't come here to be two years ago to, or last year to be the offensive coordinator. I, I came to learn and continue my growth as a coach, and it just happened to work out that way. Yeah, Mike, to follow up on that, Coach Hartley the other day mentioned there's north of 20 alumni Georgia alumni working in the program. How does that factor into recruiting and telling recruits just what this university can provide for you even after your playing career? Stuff well, like I think it's actually, I think 26 alumni uh, work, in, work in the football uh, department uh, with, with football. And, you know, when you recruit a young man, uh, you know, there's never going to be 100% stability. But, you know, they, they're looking for stability. You know, you hear those saying, don't go, you know, for the coach. You got to go for the school and where you fit in. But at the same time, you know, recruits are going to go, you know, be attracted to certain coaches. And I think that's a selling point that you've got coaches on this staff that love the University of Georgia uh, and that are here, you know, to help University of Georgia be the best they can be in all areas, not just on the field. And it's important to guys that graduated from here that this place is successful in all areas. And I think that's a selling point uh, to the recruits. Hey, Mike, um, I'm curious, how tough is it when you've been – run your own program to, I don't know, don't want to say take a step back, but, you know, to start working again for somebody when you've been the guy in charge for a number of years. Is that, a, is that tough to do? Uh, you know, the question is, you know, how tough is it to run your own program? Or to, when, you're, when you come back and you're not running your own program, I, I really think it's a little bit easier uh, because you've, you've sat in that chair as a head coach and you know everything that that head coach is dealing with, not just – you know, not just with aspect to practice and planning for games. There's so much that comes across the head coach's desk where before, you know, you wondered why the head coach might do something or why we aren't doing this. And you really know, you don't, you don't know what all a head coach has to balance. So I think, you know, I think it makes you a better assistant, uh, you know, knowing when to, to voice your opinion, you know, maybe walking in there and saying something private or, or the head coach could ask you questions and say, we might have done it this way. And then you know how to be a good soldier because you've been in that chair and you know what your responsibility is. And your number one responsibility is to be loyal to the head coach. Mike, what have you uh, seen from the quarterbacks at this point in fall camp? And when you look specifically to Saturday, that first scrimmage, what are you looking for from all three of those guys? Okay, we're, we're basically finishing up our last day of install uh, today, uh, and, then, and then tomorrow will be a review, and then we have the scrimmage. But I've been pleased with, with all the quarterbacks. Uh, we've been focusing on the process of each practice and each install and focusing on what we can control in that moment. Uh, these guys have done a great job. They've been ups and downs, but they've been focused. They've come into every meeting ready to go, prepared before the meeting. And then Saturday, we, we, it's a scrimmage. It's the closest thing that we can get to a, to a game. It's how are you going to handle those situations when you're out there with a the team by yourself. There's no coaches on the field. And the bottom line for a quarterback, it, it's, you know, can we execute? Are you going to be able to execute and get us in the right play, get us in the right protection, run the offense, handle third down situations, red zone situations? And that's what we're looking for, handling those situations in a game and having continuity on offense. 
Hey, Mike. Mark. Would you say you're bringing any sort of extra edge to the job this year, given the last two coordinator stops? I mean, you didn't have as much success as you're accustomed to. Uh, you know, I, I think I, I have the same edge that I've always had. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, uh, those things didn't work out. And when those things don't work out, you look yourself in, in the mirror. Uh, you don't point fingers or, or make excuses. They didn't work out. And come here with the, with the mindset that I'm doing everything possible to help us be successful at the University of Georgia. And that's that's my my edge uh, as, a, as an offensive coach. It's not – Okay, this didn't work last time. In this situation, I got to prove myself this time. Uh, you know, I always tell the players, you know, there are going to be moments that that we have failures, uh, and you keep getting yourself back up on your feet because what's on the other side of failure is success. Uh, and keep putting yourself out. That, that we know this job has pressure. There's pressure that comes with this job. I've sat in this chair. I understand those pressures, and I think I'm older and have more experience uh, now to handle those pressures and focus on our football team, especially our offense, what I'm in charge of, and getting them ready to practice on a daily basis and getting ready to play on Saturdays. Yeah, Coach, you have obviously had some roster turnover. Darnell played such an impactful role for you guys. Stetson Bennett's ability is very different than maybe what you might be playing at the position this year anyways. How much would the offense have changed no matter the offensive coordinator change anyways? Well, I think each year uh, you try to figure out your identity uh, as an as an offense, and you know whether you know I was sitting there, coordinator Coach Monk, and came back. You got to figure out what what pieces of the puzzle fit to what things that we did well last year. What are we going to have to change? Darnell was such a big impact for us. You know, not le not necessarily just blocking in line, but being able to block on the perimeter. Uh, Stetson's ability to move. So we got to figure out the pieces that fit best for us offensively, and that's part of what fall camp is about. Day one in the first meeting, we talked about competition to our to our players and, and building depth, but competition, not necessarily going against the defense, competition between uh, position groups. You know, there's competition between the tight ends and the receivers. Are we going to, you know, our tight ends going to step up? Are we going to still be a lot of 12? We're going to have to be more 11. So those are things that you're figuring out through camp. And at the end of the day, you got to put the best guys on the field to give you the best chance to be successful. Uh, and then we want to build depth. If there's multiple people that can do multiple things, that increases our volume as an offense, more things that we can do. So we're still trying to figure that out. Uh, practice, we got a good feel for it right now, but we still got to go play on Saturday in a scrimmage and fine tune things the next uh, you know, eight, nine days until the second scrimmage is over. How you doing, Mike? Yep. Uh, since you've been here last, you know, Georgia's won two national championships and played for another. and. It would appear, just based on roster size and speed, that that has changed and increased uh, in the time you were away and at other places. I, I just wonder if you can validate that. And once you got down there in the weeds and you start figuring out who can do what and who's got what skill level, uh, and how does that play into you know what your philosophy is going to be? Well, uh, you know, I think the number one thing, I think they've done a great job of, of recruiting around here. And, and, and there's always been good players at the University of Georgia, but I think Coach has done a great job of building depth at, at all the positions, uh, you know, ones, twos, threes. And, and the way we practice, uh, the way that we go about and develop guys, two-spot things, guys are constantly working on their craft. Uh, you know, whether you're a a four stringer today or a first stringer, you're getting reps like the first string guys. So guys can develop and I think that helps, you know, them being able to play faster or when their opportunity comes, you know, via injury or guys graduate, they're able to step up uh, and play at a successful level. You got a chance to compete. Uh, that would be that would be the number one thing for me is the, the depth that, that is here now and the development and, and Coach Smart does a great job of having a plan and developing these guys and you know, there's never a, a, a meeting that goes by that development in stress by our head coach of, you know, you're not just coaching the, the first team or the second team, or you're coaching everybody out there. Hey, Mike, you've coached a lot of uniquely talented players, and I think Brock Bowers fits into that category. What is your sort of plan of getting the most out of him this year, and how does working with players who are that talented challenge you as a, as a play caller, as a coordinator, as a coach to – to get better and find better ways to use Okay, them. well, number one, uh, as a play caller, uh, it's about players and not plays. Uh, that's number one. Your job as a play caller, if a guy's got a unique ability to make plays and plays that turn into explosive, we got to find a job as 
do a good job as a staff of designing plays that, that get him touches. Uh, as far as of, of getting the best out of Brock Bowers, uh, you're going to get the best out of Brock Bowers every single day. Uh, he is not a guy that needs to be motivated. Uh, he's locked in in every meeting, every walkthrough. Uh, I've had the good fortune of sitting in a tight end meeting room last year and being able to see, you know, how something he, – he's a guy that when Coach Hartley would mention it one time, he got it. Uh, he did not need a lot of reps. He's extremely smart, uh, and he's very humble. Uh, he reminds me a lot of a guy like Nick Chubb when I was here before that just went and worked every single day. Uh, he tried to get better no matter what he had done the day before, the game before, the year before. He was constantly trying to improve his, in his craft. So, uh, you know, he's, he's a joy to coach, and I'm glad he's a Georgia Bulldog. Mike, when we talked to Coach Munkin last winter, he really praised you and said that you would do all the little things to try to help. What was your mindset as an analyst and just the ways you wanted to, to be able to help? Well, I kind of mentioned it uh, earlier. Uh, I think Seth asked the question. You know, when I came came back to the University of Georgia in an off-the-field role as an analyst, as an analyst, your number one job is is to help the coaches. And, you know, I wanted to help Coach Munkin and that staff that any, any way – that I could, and also learn. You know, you're coming in and you're trying to learn how Coach Smart set his practice schedule, how he ran the offseason, all those things, but also how Coach Munkin was running his offense. So you're learning. And then I've sat in that chair before, too. Uh, and, you know, at first, you don't want a guy that's got a bunch of ideas. You want a guy that if he gives him a task, he's going to get it done. And whatever my task was, I wanted to try to do it to the best of my ability and know that, that he could count on me. And I think as the season, went on, that trust continued to build between Coach Munkin and I and, you know, felt more comfortable asking me some questions about what I thought. But at the end of the day, I've sat in that chair. And if he didn't use my idea, I didn't get my feelings hurt. Uh, and I think that's what you got to do as a good staff member. You're going to present ideas. We all present ideas. But at the end of the day, the coordinator's got to pick which ideas he wants to put on that call sheet. And if he doesn't use my idea, so be it. If he does, great. In the, the day, I'm going to help those coaches coach those ideas to the players. So, just trying to be uh, a sponge in there and help in any way that he asks, well, no matter whatever it was. You talk about presenting ideas. I know uh, Lincoln mentioned uh, the play call, I guess, in the LSU game that, that he credited you with. Uh, I'm curious what, what you added to your toolbox as a play caller and offensive coordinator. You know, just spending a year with uh, someone like Todd, uh, obviously you have your own body of work, but what did you gain? Yeah, they're, they're all, you know, they all, they're, they're all have a, bo a body of plays, and they're, they're all pretty similar uh, when you look at different offenses. Now, some might focus more on a balance pro style like us. Some might be more spread. We have elements of, of all that, and, I, you know, I'd like to think that I've had elements of all that in, in, in my offenses in the past. I, I would think the number one thing is probably more, more movement, more shifts in, in motions, uh, you know, really to disguise formations and, and get guys in matchups that were uh, beneficial to our offense. Uh, he really did an outstanding job of that. Yeah, Mike, you know, Kirby and everybody has mentioned that the offense for the most part will stay the same with your kind of influence on it. What has that process been of maybe putting your own spin and terminology and stuff on some things while keeping the majority of things the same for, you know, to keep the players from having to learn too much? Well, the, the main thing uh, that didn't change was the terminology. You know, you want to keep the terminology the same for the players. Uh, there'll be little nuances that, that will change of how we do things and a lot of what Brooks asked earlier, you know, what's our identity going to be, you know, offensively. I think that you might see some changes of our identity changes of who we are offensively and what we got to do. We don't have a guy that 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 could possibly extend, extend plays as well. Well, we've got two of those guys that can, but, but Stetson had elite quickness and ability to, to get yourself out of trouble. We don't have a 6'7", 285-pound tight end. So I think you'll see some different things there. And, and that, that you might, it would have been a little bit different anyway, no matter who's standing up here. Um, kind of along the same lines of Mark talked about the toolbox thing, but just from a procedural and a process standpoint from Coach Munkin, um, what did you learn there in terms of kind of how he did things and how he approached things, use personnel, things like that? Uh, procedure, I'd say in, during the game week, uh, you know, we I've, I've usually sat as a whole staff and kind of watched things and had ideas. Uh, it was it was broken off. Uh, each guy had a responsibility to present it to the staff, and, and he allowed ownership within the staff. I had an area. You know, Coach Harley has an area. Coach 
Clinton has an area, Coach McGee has an area, and, and those guys took ownership of that. And I think, you know, again, he doesn't use every idea that somebody presents, but he gave the, the staff in that room ownership of the game plan. And I thought that that was uh, unique. And then, and then again, the, the, the shifting in motion and stuff like that uh, of getting us in, in some plays and some advantages of, of those guys not being able to attack certain formations. Hey, Coach, I know you've talked a lot about your analyst role last year, but you brought in two guys this uh, this offseason. And I know it's early, but what have you seen from guys like Daryl Dickey and Brandon Streeter? Well, well, first of all, I'm excited that we, we got Daryl Dickey and, and Brandon Streeter, two guys that are experienced uh, coordinators. Uh, Coach Streeter, obviously, in Clemson. Coach Dickey has been everywhere. So those are guys that, you know, as, as, a, as a coach, you can bounce things off, ideas that you might have. How have you done it this way? What have you done? Is it a little bit different? Is it the same? And then their roles will increase uh, once the season gets closer of, of having areas and present it to the staff. And, you know, it, it, you know, some weeks it might be a multitude of things, and some weeks it might be one play that helps to get us a first down or uh, a conversion on third down or, or score in the red zone. So I'm excited about that. Nobody has all the answers, okay? Uh, I, I've never had all the answers, I think. Uh, if Coach Munkin would sitting up here, he would say he didn't have all the answers. So you're in that staff room, you're looking for ideas and you're looking for fresh ideas, maybe a spin on the way that you've done something in the past that will give you an advantage that somebody, the defense might not be able to recognize. So it's all about ideas and, and putting ourselves in position where we can be successful in offense. Thanks, All right. Thanks.